So in this video, we are going to be looking at implementing sitemap within SEO helper. So here is an example of sitemap. This is the actual sitemap that I have used on Weaver space. It's the one currently in use. So we can see exactly how I am doing it. Now, first step that you need to do before we use sitemap within SEO helper is we need to go into your projects, advanced settings. And we need to turn off generate search engine sitemap. Okay, so turn that one off. Now, if you had this on it and published, another thing you'll have to do is remove the sitemap.xml file that is on your server. Okay, so use your FTP client or somewhere in cPanel where you're going to delete the sitemap.xml. Okay, because uh, SEO Helper does not use sitemap.xml. We'll get into that a little bit later. So you'll probably notice that there are multiple SEO helper uh, sitemap stacks. There are there's sitemap, sitemap index, and sitemap ping. Okay, we will uh, go through all three of these stacks. Right now, the basic sitemap stack that we're going to look at is sitemap. This is what most users are going to be using. So chances are you're going to just be creating a uh, a page on your on your project that is called sitemap. And that's going to be what we submit to Google. On this page, um, you do need to make sure that it's the only thing on the page. Okay, so the only thing on this page needs to be sitemap, nothing else. Now, if you want, you can go ahead and set this to be a different theme. It doesn't really matter. Okay, sitemap will take care of it. When you add this uh, to your page, you will have one entry by default. Here we see I have multiple. You can easily add different entries by just going ahead and say sitemap location, or you can actually do a batch load. Okay. Let's look at adding a new location here. Okay. So let's look at I, some of my existing pages that I have here. So what you're going to do is you're going to add the full URL to the web page that you want to index. Then you're going to set the priority. Okay. This is kind of like uh, in your own, like you can read this whole tool tip here that kind of uh, explains what the priority is. But it essentially tells the search engines, this page is a really important page or not a very important page. Okay, so do search engines really use this? I don't know. It's a feature of sitemap. So there we go. You can set your priority from zero to one, basically. Then you can tell search engines here how often your page is changing, just to kind of give them an idea of how often that page changes. Okay, so... Uh, whether or not it's going to be hourly, daily, weekly, yearly, never changes. Now, all of these in the optional settings here, these are definitely all optional. You don't have to set them. Path page. What this is, is if you go ahead and link to the page, so basically you're going to find like this is my support page. I can go ahead and link this to the support page. Now, what this does is if you take the time to do that, whenever you publish that support page, that the sitemap will automatically see that it changed and it'll flag, it'll basically add the last modified time to your sitemap file, okay? So it's a nice to have. You do have to link those two pages together um, or link this with the actual web page, but you know there are benefits to that if you wanna take the time to do that. Next is you can actually add a CSV of image URLs. So if you want particular images that are associated with this web page to be indexed by your search engines, basically like Google image search or, you know, so on and so forth, if you want those images to be indexed, now they will be indexed throughout just by finding them on the page, but this just gives them more priority, right? So if you add images to your sitemap, the search engines are more likely to index those and serve them up via image search. Now, there are more advanced options here, and we can go ahead and enable that with this button. When you click this enable, you'll see that, and you can do this for every single page, okay? Um, so these are advanced options for each and individual URL. Now, you'll see that that uh, shows us a new plus button. We go ahead and click that. And here we have more options. We can do alternate language, image, video, or hosted video, 
Okay, so let's go through those. Alternate language. So if you have a dual language website, and let's say your default is English, but you have an alternate page um, for this particular URL that is in German or English or whatever, right? Um, you can go ahead and, and supply that alternate um, URL for that particular language. Okay, and if you have multiple, you can actually add multiple alternate language tags. This is very beneficial. This is definitely a, a lot of work if you are building a multi-language website, but this is really the only way to do this throughout the entire ecosystem. Um, it's the only add-on that lets you do that um, particular feature. So it's a must-have for alternate language sites. Really, really great. Next up is you can add images. Now, earlier on, I said that we could go ahead and in the main, you can add a CSV of images. This is just a way of adding it one by one if you wanted it to, just a different way. Um, I, I wanted to be able to make it super easy if you wanted to define multiple images all at once just by having a CSV of them here, uh, but you can provide them one by one uh, right here. Next is if you have a self-hosted video that's associated with this URL, you can go ahead and add that, okay? So that video will be added there. And then if you have a hosted video such as YouTube or Vimeo or things like that, you can go ahead and add uh, the hosted video. So there we go. And you can have multiple videos, multiple uh, you know images, multiple languages. You can have as many of these as you want, um, all associated with a single URL. All right, now, an option I skipped earlier was this sitemap location batch load, okay? And so what this allows us to do is you can actually load a comma delimited list of URLs, and then it allows you to add priorities and change frequencies. Basically, it'll sign uh, the same priority and same change frequency for every URL that you define inside the CSE. So it's just a little bit quicker. Um, I kind of like the interface of showing each individual one and managing them individually. But um, if you just want to get the quick and dirty thing done, you can go ahead and just batch out a list of URLs uh, along with the frequency and the priority of those URLs. Okay, so now that we've built our sitemap, how do we actually submit this to search engines? Let's show you how to submit this inside Google right now. So what you're gonna wanna do is, um, most, like I said, I have a quite complex setup, which we will d dive into in a minute um, on Weaver Space. Um, so, but mostly what you're going to do is you're going to be publishing, you're gonna have a single sitemap for all of your entire site and you're gonna have it set to slash sitemap and the file name is gonna be index.php, okay? That's how I'd recommend you set it up, okay? If you have a single sitemap file. So now that we know that, um, we're going to dive into, let's head over into Google Search Console. All right, so now we are in Google Search Console and we're going to go ahead and you go into the sitemaps tab. And if you have any sitemaps, it'll they'll be shown here, okay? Now, if here's another, if you had sitemap.xml before and you weren't using SEO Helper, you're gonna wanna delete that. So you're gonna go in here and then you can actually delete a sitemap file. Actually, if, once you delete it from the server and Google doesn't find it anymore, um, Google will flag it and delete it automatically eventually. Um, but actually it doesn't look like you can delete. Uh, let, oh, that's a directory though. Let's see, can you delete? Hmm. You can't, I, I don't see a way of actually deleting. Oh, remove sitemap. So once you go into a particular sitemap file, you can go ahead and say, remove sitemap. I'm not gonna do that. Uh, for obvious reasons, this is my active live account. So um, Google will already have your URL right here. And you're just gonna type sitemap slash, okay? So um, you could add index.php if you wanna put the full path, that's okay. Um, you know, but my server does do sitemap slash. And um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna submit that and that's it. Assuming you used the setup that I recommended, having the folder of sitemap, the page index.php, um, that's all you need to do. So you just submit this and it will show up in here uh, within Google. Um, and if we go ahead and click on, like here's that pages one that we were looking at, I click on pages and it, it'll show us how many pages were discovered, so on and so forth, right? And that was a rather small one. If you notice that seven, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all my pages were discovered, 
Okay, so pretty good. What's the next step? Like if you have a more advanced website, I will, let's show you what I do on Weaver Space. So on Weaver Space, you'll notice here in the sidebar, I have actually three different sitemap files, okay? I have one that kind of for my static pages. I have another one for all my stacks pages. And then I have another one still of my, all my external demos for stacks. Cause some of my stacks have, you know, demos on the actual product page and some have external. So I want to make sure those external uh, demos are all indexed. Let's, let's look at that. We already saw the pages, right? If you notice I, the URL here is sitemap pages index. Okay. This is the page that we were looking at before. Again, for you, I told you to just set it to sitemap. If you have one, I have it set it to be sitemap slash pages. Okay. So this sitemap here builds out all of my stacks, all of my product URLs. Now, this particular page, I do have to say, um, no one else has access to. So we're not going to dive into it. Um, this is just an unreleased version uh, that integrates with Total CMS 2. Um, however, I do have to say that there is sitemap integration built in Total CMS 1 for blog, okay? Um, and ultimately in Total CMS 3, we will have something similar to this. Um, but yeah, we're going we're gonna to skip this. Next is my demo URLs. And this is all of the demo URLs, as I said earlier. And to make it easy on me, basically all I did is I just did a common delimited list of URLs that all have my external um, demos. So, and then I just use the same priority and frequency for all of them. Now, now that I have my three different sitemaps enabled, I could submit all three of these sitemaps individually. However, um, there is another stack that I had mentioned earlier called sitemap index. Now, what is that? So this page, this page is slash sitemap. Okay, so this is my default sitemap on Weaver Space. So this is what you would normally use if you were just having one sitemap to control your entire site. But on my site, I have multiple. So my default sitemap, which is slash sitemap, has a sitemap index. And then what I have here is we can add multiple sitemap files. So this is basically like a directory of sitemaps, okay? So if we look at all of these individual sitemaps, basically what I do is I put in the URLs to my three sitemaps that I, pages that I just showed you. So basically this is a sitemap of sitemap files. So this is why when we look in Google Search Console at Weaver Space, you'll see that at the top, at the top, I only have one sitemap submitted. And if I click on it, it takes me inside. It's like a folder, right? And then in, inside there, I have multiple different um, sitemaps, which are the ones that we looked at. One way I mentioned earlier how Total CMS One currently has a blog um, integration for sitemap. So as you probably know, blog already creates a sitemap file for you automatically, okay? You can copy that from the admin area on the blog list, okay? And what you would do is you would just get the sitemap that Total CMS creates, and you're going to add that into your sitemap index. So you're just gonna copy that from your admin area um, and then paste it right here. Um, and then that way, if you have multiple blogs, or you know, even if you're, you know, abusing blog for products or whatever other reason, you basically just put in those sitemaps for every single Total CMS blog inside of a sitemap index and then submit that. That way you only have, it's super easy to manage. You have one sitemap file and then that indexes multiple different ones throughout your website. The last stack I mentioned was sitemap ping, okay? And what this does is, you're going to add this. You're not going to add this to your sitemap pages. This is one that you're going to add to maybe an admin page or something like that, probably an authenticated page. And basically you can add whatever button you want in here. All right. Add any button inside of this. And when you click on it, what it will do is it will actually go ahead and request Google to re-index your sitemap. So basically you configure your sitemap URLs in here. Um, and then you can have a confirm message, okay, to confirm, are you sure you want to submit your sitemap? 
Now, this doesn't, this just requests Google eventually <laughs> re-index your sitemap. It doesn't like do it immediately. It's just a, hey, Google and Bing, please re-index my sitemap. I personally don't use this because I find that that API with Google and Bing just, it's not a guarantee it's going to happen right now anyway. It's just a a request. So you can add that to your admin pages if you'd like a way to request Google and Ping, um, Google and Bing to uh, index, re index your sitemaps. But again, there's no time frame when they guarantee they're going to do that. So it'll just eventually happen, which it will eventually just happen anyways. So I'm not really sure if it actually does anything.